Hey, welcome back guys, JC here, and here's my year-end review for the SP Racing EVO Fly Controller. As always, look in the top right of your screen or description below for links to my other playlists uh, for other helpful videos as well as other reviews. I'm going to tell you about this fly controller, give you all the specs, and at the very end I will give you my personal opinion on it. So let's begin. You can pick up this fly controller now for about $35 which I'm pretty sure that that's the same price it was when it first released. The price hasn't dropped any, uh, which is it's still not a bad price, but moving on. It has an F3 processor. I know a lot of flight controllers coming around are coming out with uh, F4 processors, but I still think we haven't reached the full potential of F3 processors, so I don't see that as a big deal. It does not have a built-in voltage regulator. You will have to power it with an external 5 volt power source, either from linear ESCs or a PDB with a built-in 5 volt regulator, and uh, apply that power to the output pins on uh, any of the channels 1 to 8. I have a video showing you how to properly power, power this, as well as get voltage in your telemetry. Uh, speaking of, because it doesn't have the built-in voltage regulator, they do give you the VBAT pins, which are located here. Through here, you would apply the full voltage of the battery to get voltage in clean flight, beta flight, your on-screen display, and or telemetry. The great thing about this board is it has a virtual COM port, meaning that uh, because of the F3 processor, it has three UARTs, but because of the VCP, you get all three UARTs available to you, and none of them are shared with USB where I'm sure some of you know, uh, boards with the CP2102 drivers, UART number one is shared with USB, so if you do have a device connected to UART one, you have to disconnect it every single time you use beta flight or clean flight, or problems will occur. It also has SPI, and SPI is faster than I2C. Uh, with SPI, you can use the full potential of these newer ESCs, like uh, one shot 42, multi shot, and D shot. They can still use all the ESCs, but you have to tone the ESCs down. Where with this board, you don't have to do that. You can run your gyro update frequency at the full 8 kilohertz, as well as the PID loop frequency at 8 kilohertz, as long as your ESCs support it. It does have a built in barometer and magnetometer, or compass, uh, which you can use to add in a GPS module for uh, the GPS features. All the sensors are tied into the processor through the MPU 9250. It does have dedicated LED pins, which are located here, but they these pads are also shared with the IR lights, which would be used for the built-in race transponding system. When you purchase this flight controller, it comes with a few IR LEDs and a QR code like this, which you can use to set up your race transponder. Uh, if you don't know, the race transponding system would be used for if you're racing on a track with a timing system, uh, because this is built in, you're already good to go instead of having to spend more money on a race transponding system. And not only that, but it's bigger and bulkier because you have to add it in where it's all built into this. Uh, but like I said, it's either or you can't have the race transponding system and IR or uh, the LEDs. With these triangles, you would just take a drop of solder and bridge it between the middle pad and one of the triangles for whichever one you want, either the IR system or LEDs. It also has a dedicated buzzer. The pins are located here. This board does not accept PWM receivers. So if you do have a PWM receiver, you will either have to buy something else or buy a different fly controller. Uh, if we look on this side, the back side, you will see where you have a ground and a 5 volt power source to power your receiver. Then you have UART number 2, which you can use for an SBUS receiver. Or, on the same pin, you have the PPM pin for a PPM receiver. Uh, if you do use a PPM receiver, you can also get telemetry off of the pin right after that one. Uh, with SBUS receivers, you would have to use a different UART, uh, either UART number 3 or 1 located here. I also have a video showing you how to do that. You can also use the Spectrum satellite receivers with uh, these standard three little pins here. You can solder on a uh, connector. It also comes with the board when you purchase it to uh, plug in your Spectrum satellite receiver. Uh, it does have eight output channels, meaning you can use up to an octocopter on this flight controller. Now it does not have any soft serial ports. 
Uh, like I said, it does have three UARTs because it is a F3 processor. Uh, most flight controllers, especially the F3 boards, they do have additional soft serial ports for even more devices. But with this one, you'll be limited to three devices, meaning, uh, say, like a S bus receiver, plus telemetry, plus an on screen display. And that's it. Uh, which is, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that's all I need. That's all I use. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is if you want to add in GPS or something like that, then you will have to get rid of one of those. Um, probably it's going to be more likely telemetry or something like that. You'll just have to pick and choose which one you want to get rid of. Now on these other boards, we've seen some with 2 megabytes of internal flash memory, some with 16, some with 32, and a few with 64. But with this one, you get the built-in SD card slot for the SD card reader, and you can have up to 64 gigabytes of black box logging. Another great feature is when you plug in the USB cable, it powers the flight controller as well as your receiver. So if you do want to go into Betaflight or CleanFlight to create any channels or even test your receiver or do anything receiver related, you don't have to plug in your LiPo battery. Uh, which really isn't that big of a deal, but it's one of my pet peeves. I hate boards that doesn't have that feature uh, because I just hate having to plug in a LiPo battery to test everything. Now, speaking of uh, GPS and stuff like that, this board, they do have firmware for this board from CleanFlight and Betaflight, as well as iNav. If you haven't heard of iNav, it's just like Betaflight and CleanFlight, uh, except they've it's more GPS, it revolves around GPS. There's more GPS features and functions and settings. Uh, so they do have firmware for this board if you do want to use this for a GPS build. I don't know if I would recommend this board for a GPS build just because there's only three UARTs and no soft serials, um, but it, it is possible. Like I said in my SP Racing Mini review, this is probably something you would want for a GPS build. As far as quality, I think it's awesome. Uh, I have I've had zero problems with this board. I mean, I've had zero problems with a lot of my boards, but uh, what really gets me is if you look on the backside, there are no capacitors, no uh, resistors, no nothing on this backside. It's just pins, except for you know the SD card reader and this little plastic JST connector. Uh, there's there's nothing to break off or uh, accidentally like I guess short out or bridge uh, so you're safe there and then on the top there's really not that much either I mean you only have a handful of capacitors and like transistors and stuff but this thing can take a beating because there's not that much that could possibly go wrong and what are my final thoughts I think it's great for the price I mean I think the board that's most comparable to this one would be the X Racer F303 version 3.1 uh, which this is a $30 board and this is a $35 board. Uh, they both have SPI, but the X Racer does not have the SD card slot uh, reader. And if you are using uh, like a 5 kilohertz gyro update frequency and your PID loop frequency on up there, um, the onboard flash memory can't record or do black box logging that quickly without running into problems where with the SD cards you don't have to worry about that. Also if the race transponder is a big deal for you and you plan on using it then this is definitely the better buy because for only five dollars more you, you will actually save money by uh, doing that. Also save space. Everything else between these boards are very similar um, but I think well also this uses the CP2102 driver meaning the uh, UART number one is shared with the USB so between that not having the SD card slot, and I guess not having the race transponder. Um, this one being five dollars more is well worth the money. Uh, now, on the same note, if you compare it to the F uh, three Flip thirty two Omnibus, I know it's really not fair because this is a very new flight controller where this one has been around for the majority of twenty sixteen. So, if I were doing a review on this when it came out, it would be completely different. But Seeing how the Omnibus is only $23 versus $35, and uh, the Omnibus has all the same features that this has, plus the built-in on-screen display and a, a built-in voltage regulator, 
then uh, it's this is this would probably be the better buy. Uh, once again, unless you really want the race transponding system, then this is still the better buy, the Evo. Uh, but other than the race transponder, the the Omnibus can do everything the Evo can do and more, and it costs what twelve dollars less. But like I said, uh, that's not a fair comparison because the Omnibus is a new one. But that does it for this one, guys. Check out the links I left for you, and I will see you there.